Thank you. So um, I'm here to tell you about a card game that I made with the uh, International, International Slavery Museum in Liverpool with uh, the Young Ambassadors, which is a program they have of young people aged 16 to 22, 23. Um, and I thought I'd like this to be interactive. So just jump in with any questions at any point. Um, and if possible, I want to cut this presentation a bit short so we can actually play the game, because I think it would be really nice to do that. OK, so first of all, who's been to the International Slavery Museum? Yes. Ah, OK, cool. So I don't have to explain what the purpose of this museum is. Explain. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, so it has to do with. Um, the transatlantic slave trade in particular, um, and it was set up in 2007, which was the bicentennial of the, uh, trans uh, of the abolition of slavery. Um, so Liverpool uh, benefited a lot from the slave trade. Um, we all know this. Uh, uh, maybe not everyone knows this, but um, it wasn't actually the first uh, location to build the museum. Uh, it w I think it was seventh, but um, it's it's quite. I think it, it's quite important to have that there, or to have this museum in existence uh, in England. Um, so, it's it's a quite. I don't know if you've done like stuff with museums or collections, but um, this is quite a heavy topic to deal with. Um, Lots, most people don't want to be confronted with this aspect of history. So that was one of the things that was challenging about this project in particular. How do you deal with um, history that's not so bright and cheerful? Um, but also, how do you do that with young people who, um, who wanted to come in and work with this and engage with this aspect of history? So the Young Ambassadors program, these are like two of the young people that I worked with, um, is a voluntary group. They meet uh, one Saturday a month. So um, they need to apply to be part of this program. Uh, they write essays to say why you would be interested in it. Um, uh, no one's turned down. I've read. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. Miraculous enough that there are teenagers who want to voluntarily give up a Saturday to spend at the Slavery Museum. Um, but the ones that do come, and I've worked with them for two years now, um, they are really, really interested in um, social justice. And um, they're very studious, really smart, engaged, um, very serious. So. Um, when I was asked to uh, do something around the collection with them and a game, um, I thought it would be quite easy to get the kids on board. But um, they don't like games. <laughs> I think if you're like really committed to human rights, you're quite, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so, so what happened was, like, I, I wanted to appeal to their sense of, uh, of history and, like, get it into, like, why they wanted to um, be a young ambassador for the Slavery Museum and, and, and keep that history and the collections uh, relevant to what they want to do now. So... The, the thing that the museum wanted me to focus on was the, um, the struggle for, for civil rights or like equality for, for everybody. And um, we did that through three categories. The objects they have in the collection, which they keep acquiring. The, um, this, this struggle for, for like, it, like full emancipation, it's, it's ongoing. So like one of the most recent um, collections they've added is the uh, Make America Great Again hat. You know, they've added that to the collection. Um, 
So it's partly through objects, um, and then all the uh, resources they have around people and um, events that, that they have. So what this game allowed, like making the game allowed me to do with the young people was to interrogate uh, and debate um, history, who gets to tell it, what's represented in it, um, and the mechanic of having a set number of cards in a deck was really good to uh, get people to debate around this idea of what gets included, what's important, and, um, and what can be discarded when you're telling this story. Um, so this is sort of like uh, how the workshops ran. So we went through like all of the resources that the Slavery Museum has, um, and, and, and that was the impetus for a lot of debate around um, who gets to tell the, the history of, of the struggle. Um, so, so what happened was this. This was um, uh, the first iteration, um, and you can see that you can see some of the objects in it. On the lower right hand, that's one of the more difficult ones, the Confederate flag. Um, and we wanted to keep it sort of to balance the oppressiveness with the resistance. So that's why we ended up calling it Civil Rights and Freedom Fights instead of um, some other ones that were discarded. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. <laughs> So really more offensive. Um, so the um, the really interesting thing happened really um, when we laid them all out and thought about um, the equal r um, representation of men versus women, um, really well known people versus lesser known people. Um, the sort of everyday objects versus like really significant ones. And the kind of general purpose or like a lot of the things that I was trying to encourage was to think of history as or, or activism as a continuum and that there's like many different ways you can uh, contribute to this and having like of, of resisting. So it's not always protesting that you need to do uh, you could boycott, uh, you can write letters, uh, you can become a politician or, you know, there's like many, many different ways of, of, of being an activist was one of the things that um, I wanted to underline uh, with the young people because it can be quite difficult to see how it's relevant to you or if it, it feels too far away. If, you, if you're only looking at Martin Luther King Jr., then you can you don't really see yourself in, in those kind of struggles or feel like you can contribute to this. So, so once we made this, uh, we started playing it. And, and, and again, I think this is the really important thing about games. Um, if you don't play it, does it really exist? Um, so the, the museum has been really good about trying to get this out to, to people. Um, these are two of my favorite sort of publicity shots. Um, to, to see who can um, play them. Um, I don't think they played it, but it's, it's good to be reminded of the legacy of slavery. Um, uh, so after that, um, what they wanted to do, because it was quite popular, and as you can see, you know, like these two old white men playing this, um, <coughs> they thought, uh, it was like people were asking, where can we buy these and use as, as resources? Uh, but we wanted to improve it by adding more um, Liverpool-specific things. Um, so this is version two. And um, I, I added, I, I got some Arts Council funding on top of what the Slavery Museum was giving me to, because I could see improvements. And I think iterations improve everything. Um, 
that um, I found an illustrator uh, that I could pay, uh, also a copywriter, because uh, it was quite difficult to get um, on, on a paper based game, like how much text do you have versus playability. So a lot of the mechanics were thought through more once, once I knew I had a, like a good prototype. Um, we also added more cards, obviously. We added more Liverpool specific things. Uh, but I also wanted to give lots of context um, to the game without like someone being there all the time. So like previously you needed um, like with like Prince Charles, like I, I, he would never play it, but like someone would know, would have to teach him how to play that. But I wanted to include the instructions in the card pack as well, so it could really be a standalone for it to be useful. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I've brought them, so when we play this, we can actually see how this works. Um, and then, again, like, if it's if it's not played, is it, does it exist? So I, I was trying to find ways to broaden the audience of, of playing this game. And um, because it's a very heavy subject, like no one's gonna willingly play this, I don't think, um, especially not kids. So I was, one, I, was, I was looking at other ways that people consume games um, and how I could share this beyond like an intimate playing circle, which is my preferred way of playing a game, but you know, it's very resource intensive to do that. So I thought about um, Twitch as, as a platform. So um, during Slavery Remembrance Day, I um, recorded this game. We did a gameplay and um, I had commentators, so I wanted to make it look like an eSport. So um, I streamed it on Twitch a week after the actual event. And I did it in the afternoon, so I thought hopefully I could get like American audiences in their time. And I was chatting while I was working this, uh, while I was streaming it. Um, so that was actually that was quite amazing to have that different audience um, online, which was like completely different from um, like an, a physical in real life one. And you had different conversations with um, for the, through the different mediums. Um, so. What? So th this is the game. Is it? So um, I'd really like to play it with you. Um, we, you could ask me some questions now, or we can just start playing. Okay. Thanks, Brian. <laughs>